Hi, welcome back to the shop. Well, you may be wondering why I'm holding an axe in my hand. It's a competition axe. Uh, I used to be a competitive chopper a uh, long, long time ago. Uh, I wasn't that competitive, but I enjoyed it. And uh, one of the things you do when you're competing is you end up with a lot of equipment and a lot of extra equipment. And one of that was axe handles. You'd break an axe handle occasionally just from, uh, uh, from fatigue of, of chopping the blocks and, and hitting them so hard. Um, so when I got out of the sport, I ended up with a lot of axe handles sitting around. Over the next several episodes, we're going to go ahead and I'll walk you through how to build a stool using axe handles. All right, well, so here's the stool we'll be making. It's a little over 29 inches high. Um, it has ash for the, the axe handles for the legs, and the top is made out of maple. On the top, I went ahead and made up a jig, and I'll show you how to do this to cut the axe eyes in it. Um, there is kind of more of a decorative wedge in there as well, and then I used some Pacific U for some bow ties to kind of hold this together because it is made out of two pieces of, of a wood. For a foot rest on it, I went ahead and used some wire rope, um, and it's continuous, and I'll show you how you can do that so there's no splices um, in this uh, foot rest. So we're going to go ahead and get started today by working on the seat. The seat top would be made out of six quarter maple, as I mentioned before. I've already milled it down to an inch and a quarter in thickness. Uh, before I join it, I'm just going to cut it to rough size. Now the seat itself is about 14 inches in diameter, so I'll just cut it a little bit long. Before we get started today, I'd like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your tools. And if you don't know how to do something correctly, find somebody that's competent that can show you how. And remember, there's no more important safety rule than to use this, your brain, because woodworking is so much easier when you have opposable thumbs. Next, we'll run it through the joiner. Now that everything has been jointed, I can go ahead and just glue it together using some yellow glue. Because this is wider than my, than I can surface, I'm going to make sure these edges join up perfectly. Although we're going to be doing quite a bit of machining and it should alleviate any real problems we might have. Good. Okay, we we'll just let that cook for a while. <laughs> While the seat blank is drying, I thought I'd go ahead and start working on the handles. Now, they come in a variety of conditions. These are rough turned handles, and when I bought them, I just bought a case and I wasn't real specific. And because of that, I got some handles that had kind of a different uh, knob on the end, not as big as this. So, uh, I try to batch them together. So I do have four handles here that are all identical pretty much, and I'll save that handle for a, another day for another stool. Now they are rough turns, so when they come off the lathe, they're gonna be just a little bit different in length. And I'm not worried about 
the uh, axe head end because I'm going to let that run wild. It's the foot that I need to, uh, or the knob end of the handle that I really need to make sure I pay attention to because everything is going to be based off of this bottom end and, and how I gauge things. And I have a jig that I'm going to set in. The jig that we'll be using is, is pretty simple. It's just made out of some half inch plywood and it's designed so that I can reference a number of things on it, um, both on the right and the left side of the axe handle just by setting it in. And that includes a hole that I can uh, use to center the hole that we're going to use for the foot rest. The top of the jig is actually cut at about a 10 degree angle and I just got this by looking at other stools and then kind of varying things um, as I went till I got an angle that I, I uh, preferred. In order to use this jig, the first thing we need to do is get everything cut to the correct length and then also cut a corresponding 10 degree angle at the bottom so that this uh, leg will sit flush when it's on the ground. And I'll just do that at the table saw. Before I go to the table saw to cut these, I want to make sure I do them all the same way and at the same spot. So what I'm going to do is line these up here and I talked about looking for the short ones and getting it see which one was the shortest. The other thing I can do is just use the square here and just kind of get everything lined up against that, uh, the shape of the handle, that inside curve here. So it's going to hit them all the same and move that down. Uh, and now the other thing I can do is if you look at this handle here, you see I have a secondary bevel on it. And that just kind of makes that footprint a little bit smaller. Um, it's just the way most axe handles are made, so I try to keep it as traditional with the shape of an axe handle as I could. So once I've done that, um, I kind of started from there and I marked that secondary line where I wanted it to end on my knob here. It came down, just kind of marked that. And like I said, I know this is about a 10 degree angle. So I just kind of rough sketched that in. I can line this up now. Once I get everything lined up, I use a straight edge. In this case, I'm using a square. I can line that up and mark those across the back of all four of the axe handles. This way I know where to make that first cut at 10 degrees and everything should come out about the same. Let's go ahead and go over to the table saw and make some cuts. To make the cuts, I just made a simple jig that I can clamp to the miter gauge on my table saw. It's set at 10 degrees and it is set up so that it's lined up with the blade here. Now all I have to do is take the line that I've marked on the back of the axe handle and set it in here. One of the reasons you need a jig like this is because you can't just put this against something uh, flat for a little ways or it's, you're going to get a different angle because your head is out here. This way I'm supported the complete length of the axe handle. Uh, and as far as the rocking back and forth, you just kind of have to do your best guess and, and hold it stable. So I'll go ahead and line that up where I want the end of that cut to be, and we'll make the cut. To make the secondary bevel, I just flipped my jig around and I have it set over here at about 50 degrees. So I just had to tilt my miter gauge to 50 degrees. I have a mark down here where I need to line up the edge of the axe handle so that I get the same exposure each time. And now I'll just nip off that corner at 50 degrees. Now that the foot of the axe has been shaped, I can mount it in this jig and that will show us where to make all the rest of the cuts. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just run the foot of it up against the stop down here and I'll clamp it in place. Now from the foot of the jig to the point up here, the innermost point of my 10 degree beveled end uh, is about 28 and 3 16 and that just happens to be what works out well for these axe handles. You could certainly make it any uh, length you really wanted to uh, depending on what you're using. Now that everything is in place, I need to make a curve cut along this angle here and I'll use that to define where I'm actually going to have it go into the, the, the bottom of the seat. And I'm going to do that with this old back saw. When you're cutting these really the wider the curve the better because you're going to 
use this as a reference for a rasp later on. Mm -hmm. So once one side is done, I can just take it off, put it on the other side of the jig, and clamp it in place. Now I can just turn it over and curve the other side. So now that that's done, the next thing I need to do is I need to cut a hole. Okay. Uh, right down here is a reference hole that I'm going to use for the foot rest. And that happens to be about 17 and a half inches down from the top. And that's kind of the, the important number. It doesn't matter how far off the ground it is, it's how far it is down from the seat that makes it comfortable to rest your feet on. Um, it's a, this particular hole is about an inch out and that's just so that it uh, centers it in the, uh, in the axe handle. So depending on the size or whatever you're using for a leg, that distance may vary. Um, I'm just going to cut a small pilot hole, and this is just for reference, later on. Yeah. Now that we've made a curve from the top of the axe handle, we can go ahead and finish forming this shoulder where it's going to meet the bottom of the seat. And to do that, I just clamped it flat on my workbench. I, I guess you could do this in a vise if you wanted to upright, but this is what works best for me. If I don't feel the uh, line is in deep enough, I can go ahead and just follow that curve around and make it a little bit deeper. Uh, I made a sample axe eye, and from that I made a simple jig that allows me to measure both the width and the thickness. Uh, and in the end, this is kind of what I want it to look like. I want to be able, I want to take off equal amounts off of both sides of the axe, uh, and probably take a little bit more off the front than I do the back when I go uh, for the the width. But the thickness should be about even. Although you're really not going to notice it once it's installed in the axe. So to short, form the shoulder, I'm just going to take a little rasp and I'm just going to start working it in that curve. And I'm just going to do that slowly until I get a good shoulder established. And then I can lean on it. Now, one of the things you have to remember when you're doing this is that the sides of this axe eye are actually straight. So you don't want to be, when you're filing on this edge here on the flats, you don't want to be rocking your rasp at all. You want to keep it nice and flat when you're running that down. Once again, I'll work on one side for a few minutes, flip it over, work on the other side, and always check to make sure trying to get that as centered as best I can. It takes about 20 minutes to do each axe handle. So. making all the shoulders in the axe handle up here and now it's time to make the hole that is going to receive the foot rest. Now in this case we're using some 5 8 wire rope that's going to go through the leg. Uh, we want to make this a little bit wider than 5 8 uh, so I have an 11 16 inch bit in my brace and we can just run it through that way. Now this bit takes 14 turns to get that pilot thread out the other side. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And now I can turn it around and finish it up. There we go. Before I go any farther on these legs, I want to sand them and actually get a couple coats of finish on. I found this works best 
for later on down the road. Now they have these kind of rough mill marks from the lathe and I really like that so I'm not going to do that much. In fact I have a piece of 150 grit wrapped in a dowel that I can just kind of run through these marks a little bit to clean up any dirt or um, areas that, that don't look quite right but I'm really not going to do that much to touch them up and then I might just give it a really kind of a light sanding uh, over the whole whole piece. After all the legs are sanded, I'm just going to drill a small pilot hole in the top so that I can insert a cup hook. With the cup hook installed, I can hang it on a wire that I've strung all across the top of my workbench. And this will allow me to pre-finish the legs. And that's important uh, because it's difficult once that piece of wire rope is running through the hole here, it's difficult to get finished down in there and make sure everything is protected. For a finish, I'm gonna, just going to be using polyurethane. I'll do a couple coats of gloss uh, cut to about 50% and then I'll do a top satin coat. That's about all we have time for today. Next time we'll start working on the seat, getting it cut to shape, dishing it out, adding the bow ties, and cutting the mortises to receive the legs. As usual, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to contact me at andrew at And until then, enjoy your day.